Wuzong Shen, bro. Kota Ibushi in the final four years in a row. Is there really? No, he, he wrote four years in a row. <laughs> four years in a row. Is there no one available rolling, rolling. <laughs> in New Japan for wrestling? He is already 39. Where is the future of this company? Why can't they just give a chance to ZSJ or Ishii? Besides, the, the matches suck too. I never thought there would be a representative decision match boring like this one between Ibushi and Kenta. Is there anyone out there that still believes in Kenta? It sucks. It just <laughs> sucks. If New Japan no longer has exciting matches, then why would I still care about it? This company is already all capitals rusted from inside to outside i used to be a fan of new japan really but now it just makes me feel disgusting <laughs> that sounds like our review of evil winning the title <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know like i'm not like the happiest that they, they're going to bushi again but i kind of get it but at the same time like how can anyone be this carry this energy for when? Where where was this energy last year when Evil was fucking up the main event scene? So, you know what I'm saying? So wait a minute. In this review, they said uh, Koda's 39. Why are we going with someone so old? And then for an alternative, they say Tomohiro Ishii, who's 45. <laughs> <laughs> or Zach. Or Zach. Right. Okay. Yeah, and Can, I mean, I like it, their olds on top idea. That's great. I'll go for that. But. Are you allowed to thumbs up people's reviews on here? I'm gonna. <laughs> no. How come? How come these guys that are giving one point zeros to the show review are not getting like, you know, anti New Japan bias like warnings like you did? I don't know. <laughs> Tell the listeners what happened, Dan. I, well, I like I hardly ever rate anything on there, and usually I only rate things I like. But there was I, there was what I forget which NXT match. Oh, it was Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes, right? It was that like zombie match or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> and I gave it one star, and then I show I went into cage match one day, and like I couldn't do anything, and there was a notice <laughs> saying, you know, you're you're on a six month <laughs> probation for your clear anti WWE bias. I'm like, what? <laughs> Like, I never rate anything, and that match sucked. Like, all the other ratings were bad. Like, I don't know. Yo, Striga, I got caught by some If you're some listening, it, it was Striga. He, he literally, like, you know, went after you personally. I guess. So I barely rate anything on there anymore. I'm scared. <laughs> Dylan Fox, talk to your boy. Yeah, Dylan. What's going on here? <laughs> but, you know... Josh, reading that review, you, you brought up a hot topic, man. There are a lot of people upset, you know, enraged by the, the Golden Star going hurt. into the final. Yeah, hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hurt business. Punished. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, the fans feel punished by, by this decision. We had several questions here. Uh, Red Eagles are raising Falcons. I really don't feel hyped by Abushi winning his block. Do you feel Abushi winning a block was, a, was too safe of a choice? Uh, friend of the show, Rich Latta. Kota Ibushi getting turned on, justified or nah? And Dom Homie One on One thoughts on the backlash from the fans due to Ibushi making the finals for the fourth straight year. In my opinion, I don't have a problem with it due to the fact that I see New Japan want to do a big time match for the G1 finals due to a weaker G1 lineup. And Okada versus Ibushi is the biggest match G1 final match that you could do at this point. The story writes itself with Ibushi trying to three peat against the ace of the company that's on the climb back to the top. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? Um, the alternative, there's a story there as well. We saw an incredible match between Kota Ibushi and Jeff Cobb just this past year. And I don't know if you recall, but when we reviewed that match, I said that Ibushi didn't beat Jeff Cobb. He survived him. And that's basically how I saw it. And we both agreed at the time that they probably have a bigger you know, and better match in them down the road. Who knows? I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm expecting Cobb to win, but Cobb versus Ibushi could also be a hot ticket match as well. You know, right? Dan, what are your thoughts on, on Ibushi going into the finals four feet in a row? I mean, I'm not too surprised by it. He's like one of the best wrestlers in the world, so why wouldn't you want him? You know, to be a <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom main event. Um, 
maybe down the road, you know, depending on if he beats Okada or Jeff Cobb, I don't have any problems with it. I love his matches. I love watching him. Uh, I, I think he's great. Uh, I can see how some people would want maybe them to elevate, like, Zack Sabre Jr. or whatever. But, like, Abushi's a known quantity. You know he's going to bring it when he comes up there. And I, I don't know, like, I don't know the metrics in Japan, like, if Abushi sells more tickets, like, if he's in a main event or something. But I'm sure that plays some part of it as well, right? Yeah, and that's something I mentioned sure. in, in a group chat that that we're in. You know, there there are some people kind of talking about, yeah, you know, why don't they go with the Sabre? Why are they going for Abushi? They're probably going with Okada. Why aren't they going with you know, a fresh matchup? And I'm like, at the end of the day, like, they have to do what draws. They right. know that Abushi versus Okada can draw. Also, we have to wait and see if Okada's going to win. But I'm pretty sure Okada's going to win. So that they know that Abushi versus Okada can draw. It's an incredible matchup. Uh, they haven't wrestled each other in a singles match, I think, since tw- I think it was, was last year that they were in the G1 again. Um, so they haven't wrestled each other since last year. So it's a, a pretty protected matchup. It's going to draw. And, you know, they're in a pandemic time where they're, they're trying to recoup from money. They haven't had full houses. Like, when you're down, you, you put the belt back on the ace. Okada hasn't been right. in the title mix in a while. He hasn't won a G1 since 2014. Like, this this is a time to, you know, reheat Okada and get business up. When they made the most money, Zuchika Okada was the world champ and was in the middle of that incredible reign. So they need some stability. They need somebody that's going to help increase business and get business back, especially with, you know, the state of emergency being lifted and Japan being doing great in vaccinations. Like, pretty soon, we're probably going to see the capacity levels raised, and you need people who are going to draw. And so that, that's why I think they're, they're going this route with Ibushi and Okada. Yeah, there's a – honestly, there's a lot to kind of unpack here, a lot of talking points and, you know, different thoughts. Um one thing I will say is right now the company is in a down period. There's no denying that a lot of it mostly has to do with, you know, the constraints and hardships brought on by COVID, you know, and we've heard good news about some of the COVID numbers and things like that in the country. So that's good news. Maybe that's a sign of things to come. Hopefully Um, we're starting to turn the corner on this thing over there. So that would be great. Um, But, you know, regardless of all that, you know, we can make, our arguments for what's best for business and what the company and what the bookers are thinking. But if the fans and the viewers are not happy, then they're not happy. You know, we can make our logical arguments all day, but people are not happy about it, you know? And I don't think it's necessarily that people don't like Abushi, Although I've always said, I don't think he's ever gotten to that tip top tier that he should get to, you know, he's kind of always just, that sort of eluded him. Um, I think it's just the fact that like, this is his fourth time in the finals, you know, four years is a really long time to go with the same guy over and over and over again. Even if you like the guy, uh, I can't think of any performer, no matter who it is that you put in the top spot of, of a G1 climax for four years running and people being happy about it. Not Shingo, not Ishii, not Kenny Omega, not Okada, not Naito, not Tanahashi. Like there, I can't think of a single soul that people would be stoked on. So I don't even really blame Abushi so much as just the booking. You know that it probably wasn't a wise idea to do this, to be honest. But from a business standpoint, I do get why they're probably doing it. Um, the other thing too is like you kind of have to look at the two sides of Ibushi. There's the, the, the post and the pre uh, pneumonia, you know, pre pneumonia, this guy came into the year, headlined wrestle kingdom, unified the belts, became the first ever world champion, you know, kind of carried the company on his back in the early part. And then, you know, after losing the belts and, and things like that had the pneumonia scare and hasn't really still been quite the same performer. I know I haven't seen all the G1, but, looking at the ratings, this it hasn't necessarily been a classic Kota Ibushi G1, you know, that we're used to seeing. And that might also play into why people feel this way, you know? Yeah. That being said, that being said, people are complaining about them not doing something fresh, not doing something new, but look at all the guys that they've gone with in this year's G1 that they've elevated or that they've given big wins to, or the very fact that Shingo Tagagi is the world champion or the fact that 
Will Ospreay won the world title this year or the fact that Kota Ibushi, an outsider, was the guy that unified the belts, became the first world champion. Like, they have done a lot of fresh things in this company this year. It's just less people are watching the product and the atmosphere isn't the best, you know? Um, am I happy that it's Ibushi going into the finals? No, because I, there's not very many outcomes that I think play favorably booking. I think the storyline makes logical sense, but I'm not like stoked about it especially given his run of matches this year uh or in this g1 but um that's pretty much my analysis i'm trying to go at it from all sides and you know but i think people do need to reel it in a little bit i think some of the outrage is a little overblown because again what was the alternative you know i guess you could go with zach and that would have been great but they didn't do that so (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you brought up a good point about the, the match quality this year. Uh, yeah, also they've been telling the story. Whether it's a story or actually Abushi still trying to recover, clearly Abushi was not, like you mentioned, it wasn't the classic Abushi G1. Um, you know, he like the Ishii match was disappointing compared to previous Ishii matches. And just, yeah, you, you look at the star ratings. Well, I, I, even look at my own star ratings, I'm like, yeah, he did not have as many great matches as he probably had in previous. So I'm sure that, that leads Neither to, did Ishii. Right, that too, yeah. Which is, those are like your top two guys for years and years and years, and neither of them had the type of G1 they typically have. Yeah. And I don't know if that's like age or, you know, maybe just the atmosphere, you know? Yeah. I'm sure both of those probably had something to do with it. 